Caddis Maximus here. This time I'm doing a wrench straightening using my old tinsel testing rig press. I've got this set of these Orion Motor Tech Amazon just uh, ratcheting box wrenches and they were just terribly, let's see if I can't get that. You can just see that they're terribly bent. Now on this one, you can see right here at the end, right where my fingers are, there is a pretty steep bend, but then the whole wrench is curved. So the easiest way to put it, I'm way too <laughs> zoomed in here to get this to really focus well, but I'm trying to get the action of the device. I have a very long gradual curve, and then right here at the end it buckles over. So there's actually two different bends in this. What I'm going to try to do is straighten this out. I'm not going to do this to every one of these wrenches, but this is going to be a good exercise to show how to use a press to be a bit more precise. You can see here that I also have a test indicator or a dial indicator. That's so when I start bending it, I'm going to press it down until it's flat, but I need to go a little bit past flat in order for it to basically end up in a resting state that is straight. But it's pretty easy to go too far. You can, of course, just put this between some blocks of wood and try to do it by hand. But when you have a press, you can be a bit more accurate because you can zero off the dial indicator when it's absolutely flat and then just see, go down, bend it some. And if it's not straight, bend it a little bit more and you can actually get a precision measurement on, or not measurement, but you can see that you're pushing down another 20 thousandths or 50 thousandths. So I have to do two bends. One, a short bend here at the end and then another one for the whole beam. So I'm going to start off with this short one at the end here. Pretty simple. I'm going to end up just taking it. Part of the nice thing about using a tinsel testing machine, testing machine for this setup is they're super duper rigid. I have two inch thick plates. These are one and an eighth inch bolts. It absolutely does not deflect or bend or build up any kind of uh, pressure or I should say uneven uh, application of force like shop presses with the, made out of I-beams and U-channel, they do flex and people know who have used those, you put a bunch of pressure on a bearing or a bushing and it builds up and then the bushing pops and, and makes a loud bang. When you press bushings out with this, there are no bangs. There is no built up tension because it doesn't deflect anywhere in the first place. It's also extremely parallel, so it's much safer. You have to be careful doing this type of stuff because it's very easy to get things to slip and uh, cause damage. So all I'm gonna do is just take this wrench I made sure everything's pretty set up right pretty well set up for me right now so that I can do the first bend and so that's all I'm gonna do is get this set up right here move this over just a little bit so it's right in the center of that that little hook at the end and get some tension on there just like this and then I'm just going to eyeball it. And what I'll do is you can see the test indicator. I'm going to bring it right up to zero. I have a really long handle for my press here so that I can get very precision accuracy when I'm tensioning it. Should make sure that this is locked down. So, right there, I'm at zero. And we can see the branch is actually relatively straight right now. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is actually leave that. I'm going to release the pressure and see how straight it is. Let me do that right now. Didn't get low enough. Come on. Now if we look at this wrench we can see that I've done a little bit of work, but I obviously didn't bend it far enough the other way. So it's a little bit better, but not uh, anywhere near close to what it needs to be. So this time I'm gonna return it, tell it straight where it hits zero, but instead I'm gonna go just a little bit past. Pump it back up to get the tension on it. So now I'm at zero, and I'm going to go ahead and say do it another 25 thousandths until the needle's horizontal. And this is how you can bend stuff, but really be much more accurate about it because you're doing it in precision measured increments. 
So now I know I've just gone 25 thousandths past. It's a, if you can see, it's kind of hard, but it's actually bowed the opposite direction a little bit here. Now I'm going to do the same thing. Simply release the tension. And see how close. Look at the chrome on these things. I was going to mention, look, just handling it here. The chrome is just, look at that. It's just peeling off like it was put on with tape or something. This is just so, such horrible tools. Uh, I don't know why I'm keeping, look at that chrome. It just has the terrible bonding. Anyway, if we, st if we start looking at the wrench now, you can see that I'm actually making some real progress, but even moving it 25 thousandths past, I'm trying to get this where it needed to be, or past, uh, I mean, overbending it, it wasn't enough to actually get the metal to seat. Because it is forged chrome vanadium steel, it's going to take some force. So I'm going to do the very same thing, but this time uh, I'm going to do it to 50 thousandths past. And it's just a repetitive process. It's a little bit tedious. There's some more chrome. you got to be careful about chrome. I do work on electrical stuff. And flaking chrome really sucks because obviously it's conductive, very conductive. So we'll just put this back in here. and do another bending exercise. But this time until the needle's pointing downward, so I'm 50 thousandths over center. Since I know 25 thousandths didn't work. With a long handle on this type of press, I mean, look at the precision I can get. I could get one ten thousandth of an inch it looks like I've totally worked it. Look at it. It looks like it's just totally bowed out, like I've ruined the wrench. But that's the nice thing about having a setup like this, is because you know that the previous didn't work right, so you just had to do a little bit more. Look at that. Now that's what I actually call progress. It looked... I mean, and that's the, the point of bending the stuff like this, because it's real easy to go too far. If I went 75 thousandths, I probably would have overbent it. But now look, if we look down this, it's actually way, way better. I think I'm more than satisfied that I've removed at least that end kink. It actually kind of weighs over. It, really bending metal rods absolutely dead straight is jobs that people make six figures at because they're shafting, they're people who can use ball peen hammers just to hit and introduce strain on steels in order to get them to self straighten there's a huge science to it but i'm satisfied with what i did with that hook so now the next thing which is going to be even a little bit more tricky is trying to get rid of this long bow in it so let me get set up for that so as you can see here since i had the little kink at the end of the wrench i know that little section is straight so i don't want to over bend it now i know that the bow is actually from that the end of the old of the sub bend to the natural the, the large whatever the large ends of this wrench so that's why i'm saying is i had to remove this curve but since i've removed it i need to make sure that i'm not rebending the whole wrench i'm just bending the second curve which just goes from this point to the end of the wrench I've got this all set up now where I, this is now straight. I've got this at a zero. In this case, it's at 500 thousandths, the reading of this. And so now, since I know I have a much longer bend, I can be a, just a little bit, not judicious, but I can be a, <laughs> move it just a little bit farther. I have a longer piece of steel that I'm bending. It's going to need more physical motion than that small little section. Even though you saw, it was surprising how far I had to bend the small section to actually get it straight. So I'm still going to go in 25 thousandths increments, but I think I'm just going to go straight to 50 thousandths on the first push to see how I do. And I can see that's not even going to be enough. So I'm going to do a full 100 thousandths, or one-tenth of an inch. And then I'm going to release and see how straight it is. Love the sound of those jacks. Obviously, I need to do a bit more. 
it just is still a bit bent and I can also see that the, maybe the tip of the curve that I'm trying to bend is more down here a little bit so I'm gonna have to see right about there so I'm gonna have to readjust the centering of the wrench get that right at the edge and just about like that and the reason I'm using these V blocks these Pins are actually ground hardened, super precision ground hardened steel pins of hydraulic motors. Uh, so they are super, super straight and accurate. And it provides me a single point to bend against. And I'll just repeat the same process. I'll just pump this back up. Get the pressure on the wrench. And this time just go on 100,000. So if that was 500,000, so I'm simply going to go to my old position that was the old position and now I'm gonna give it another hundred thousandths so now I'm at seven hundred thousandths reading on this and we can see that wrench looks like I have just ruined it I just went way too far but once again let me loosen this up the point of all those measurements is simply so that you can know that okay what I did before wasn't enough and even though it looks like I overbent it I actually haven't gone that far you can see that it isn't perfect but it's still it's gotten a whole heck of a lot better it actually looks really straight up here so I'm gonna do one more little bend about like this and you just keep on seeing where the because when you bend it back you may bend in one point but as you're bending it you know you may get a portion of it more straight and you'll see that the center of the curve may move and you need to be aware of that and so that's essentially what I'm doing right here and we're just gonna repeat this process and that's all there really is to it a press makes it much and a dial indicator makes it much better since I'm starting at a new center point, you don't want to use your old measurements. You kind of have to start over. I have the blocks a little closer together, so this time I'm just going to do... I'm probably going to do 100,000 since I know uh, that it needed quite a bit of force last time, or quite a bit of deflection. We'll release it here. I have a magnet holding up that steel rod and magnetism is traveling through the rod and sticking to the wrench. That actually isn't too bad. I got it pretty darn close. Actually, just one more pass, maybe even just 50 thousandths past what I was just doing. And we'll do this one more time. So I know the last time I was at 600. So I'm going to go all the way up to 600, and then I'm going to go 50 thousandths past that. Actually, I'm going to go 65 thousandths, give myself a little bit of extra. These are distances when you're using a press. It's impossible to eyeball, uh, you know, 15 thousandths. You can certainly see it, but it is difficult to eyeball, and it's so nice just to have an actual measuring tool so you know how far you're getting. Look at that wrench. It's not perfect, but it's actually more than tolerable now. Well more than tolerable. I should probably do one more pass, and it'll probably be just perfect. <laughs> Always make sure that you have the wrench facing the correct direction. It really sucks to uh, try to straighten out a wrench and realize you just did a pass with it upside down. You just re-bent it back to where it came from, because, of course, it wastes a whole bunch of time. All right, so we were no, we were at 65 last time, so I'm gonna go all the way up to 700 thousandths. That's just what this is reading the way I have it set up. That wrench, I mean, that wrench is mighty bowed in the wrong direction. Mighty bow, more well, more bent than it ever was. But I know that I've overbent it in the incorrect, just enough, and look at that. So it's not perfect, I still have a little jog at the end, but compared to the beginning of this video, you can see this wrench is a whole heck of a lot better. I could probably do one more press right here in the center, it looks like. Yeah, one more pressing, 
and this is just really the whole process and that's kind of why I like showing this is you got to really make sure everything's centered so it doesn't uh, you don't have anything slip once again but it's kind of satisfying because it's really pretty precision and it's surprisingly effective and it's good practice and since I know I have to go pretty far to get a good bend, I'm just going to flat out do 200 thousandths of push right here. Call that good and see how that does. And so as you work with the piece of material, you get more of a feel on exactly how far you have to overbend it. And wow, I'm getting darn close there. Some of this is the bad finishing. I'm getting really darn close. I need one more press. Which I think I had it in a relatively good spot. I just needed to go even further than I went last time. So this should be the last time that I do this. And we'll go all the way up to 750 thousandths. There we go. And now let's see how I done. So on the long sections, you got to deflect it more and it takes maybe a few more cycles. I could probably do yet another cycle just trying to get this super straight. Oops, forgot to hit record. Look at it now. <laughs> that thing is way bent. Forged steel really wants to stay in the shape uh, that it was forged in. That's the reason they forge steels is because it aligns the crystalline structure and makes it a real effort. Now let's take a look at this wrench. Oh, I'm getting much closer there. I still have a little bit of a curve. So it's just a repetitive process. You keep finding the new center of curves. But compared to the start of this video, that wrench is still a heck of a lot better than it was. So I'll probably end up doing just another pass. Maybe I won't. If I'm really looking at it like this, maybe another pass. You know, I'm just going to leave it. I've already spent enough time on it, and I'm more than satisfied. And so this is a really long video of a tedious process, but that's kind of the point. You can just use a press and a dial indicator, and just with a little bit of time and patience, you can just continue to press things a little bit more, a little bit more, find the new uh, peaks or valleys of the curvature, and over a repetitive process, or methodically, you can get this thing just straighter and straighter, and you can start using straight edges. It's really as far as you want to go, but as you saw, just a few minutes, and I took a wrench that was just horribly, you know, warped from the factory, and now it has like a small jog in it. This is like the kind of bend that if, you, if, if it was like this, out of the box, I would say, oh, it's a cheap Chinese wrench, I, that's, but that's reasonably straight considering. The way it was before, it was like, I'm going to return these. This is just warped beyond belief, so... Anyway, always wanted to do a little video on how to use a press and a dial indicator to straighten metal bars, in this case, wrenches. Hey, I really appreciate everybody who's been watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.